Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Happiness Retreat. I am your host, Kimberly Trebs, and today we have the amazing fortune to be in conversation with one of my dearest friends and colleagues, the fabulous and quantumly talented Kenji Kumara, <laughs> who is a creator of quantum light weaving and so much more. Hello, Kenji, and thank you so much for taking your time to share with us today. Kimberly, how are you? It's so great to connect again. I haven't seen you for at least mm, a couple days. <laughs> and we chatted on the phone since then. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you today? I'm outrageously blessed, just like everybody else is outrageously blessed today. For those of you who don't know us, we've been, we've taken a cross country tour together because Kenji moved from <laughs> Sedona to North Carolina. And that absolutely awesome painting behind me was one of my rewards. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. And the, um, and that was actually in his guest bedroom in Sedona. And I always commented, Kenji, I love that painting. And the next thing I know, <laughs> I have it. And the scarf was a gift too. So I don't know, I'm just feeling all, all good over here. <laughs> <laughs> so Kenji, um, all of these conversations are all about spirituality, the soul and mastering your own energy. And I'm so happy you're here today to tell us how to utilize all the offerings in your quantum light weaving technologies as a vehicle for transformation. So could you please start at the beginning and tell us a little bit about your background and your very rich modality training that you have and how quantum light weaving came to be birthed? Okay, to make a very long story, very short. I was born in Berkeley, California, which I felt back at the time was like the um, the growth place of spiritual kind of knowledge and information that went out to the rest of the United States, Berkeley, California. Uh, anyway, I was born in the quieter days in Berkeley, and when I was five, I asked my mom, "Who am I?" I went, "Actually, mom was scrubbing the bathtub." And I went up to her spontaneously and went, Mommy, who am I? And she stopped like she was startled and like paused and then turned around and looked at me and she said, you're Japanese. And then I energetically scratched my head and I went, no, Mom, that's not what I was asking. And I walked away. <laughs> that began my search at age five because Mommy didn't tell me what I really wanted to know. So obviously, I'm not Japanese, <laughs> essentially. So that began my search. Well, you're American, so right? You're born in America, so clearly. <laughs> I was born in America. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, she said, you are a spiritual being from God that's having an earth experience through a very physical, dense body. I would have got it, and I wouldn't have had to go on my search. <laughs> So, however, she thought you were five and couldn't figure that, I mean, couldn't handle that, that answer. So she made yeah. it short and sweet. She did. She made it short and sweet. So um, that began my search. And I searched up until probably in the late 1990s. And I used to read everything. I uh, used to go to see pretty much uh, who was available in the greater healing arts consciousness field. I've studied a bunch of different modalities. But what I've learned to do instinctively, intuitively, was to merge um, disciplines together. Mm -hmm. So actually, right now, what you are experiencing is my over five decades of in the field, uh, making my soup, so to speak. And so here's today's edition, which will be different next month. Next month's edition will be different than today's edition. So basically, I was searching for the truth. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, I realized, okay, now I've just got to do it. Mm -hmm. And I can't study with any more people. I just got to go out and do it. And um, I said, okay, universe, I need a brand name because everybody's got a name. So please send me the name. 
And I knew for some reason quantum had to be in it. Mm -hmm. And I got this other term, light weaving, from the other side, so to speak. And I love that phrase, light weaving. That's a lot better than light working because as a light worker, that just sounds like you got to work too hard mm -hmm. for everything. But as a light weaver, well, that feels more flowing. That feels much lighter. So we are light weaving the quantum. So the, you know, we know what the earth plane is. We all live here. But we don't all know what you mean by the quantum. Think of it this way. We've all gotten into the zone. Athletes go into the zone. They actually call it the zone. Hmm. Okay. Where everything becomes effortless, less time stops. Everything becomes in slow motion. They know what they're going to do before they do it. All that good stuff. They feel so connected with the game itself. Okay. Athletes call that the zone. That's part of the bigger picture. Now, in the churches, they talk about the ecstatic experience or they talk about um, being overcome by the Holy Spirit uh, or, or the falling out experience, which is equivalent to like our wave experience. Um, it's like artists or gardeners. They get so involved with what they're doing that they just lose track of time and space, lose track of their bodies. They lose track of their mind and they're just in the experience. Okay, that is the quantum. That's that place where you don't have to think and things get done, things get accomplished. Does that make sense? So the athletes are on the planet, but they've already done their training. And when they hear that, you know, the, the, the gun go off to go, they just then allow themselves to be and do what their body's naturally going to do. And that could be whether you're a teacher, a writer, an artist, a musician. Okay. Well, it, it, it takes practice. Obviously, most people can't do it consciously. Uh, athletes seem to somehow fall into that space. But through meditation, you can train yourself to actually induce the state beyond relaxation, beyond the place of calm and centering, the Buddhists would call it that place of stillness, but there's a place where when you do your in, internal preparation, uh, it just begins to emerge into your awareness, this feeling of connection, this feeling of oneness, this feeling of, some people call it love. I, I personally like to call it the sense of connection and feeling. Okay, so the Transcendental Meditation Group, they call it... Um, God, I just lost the word. It's basically that feeling that you are connected with everything that you are experiencing in that moment. There is no division between yourself and the experience. So in a sense, you get lost in the experience. You're very conscious. Mm -hmm. So that's that place of creativity. So that's the place where the artists go. That's the place where the potter goes to when they're doing their, their bowl, as an example. They become the vessel. Writers, automatic writing, they are just writing. There's no thoughts, it just comes through when they're writing. You know that one, most people know that one. So that's that place, that's that creative place. So basically it's that place of creativity. It's that place where if you were to talk about Jesus, or Buddha, what place they tapped, it would be that place. So then if people, so people want to be there, that's yeah. where they're most happy, where they're most creative. So it's basically, they want to be, I think I heard you say, it's a connection to that field. And there can be blocks to that, which is why people, they feel like they're misconnected, disconnected, unconnected from something. And I would venture to guess that your clients would say they're looking for a connection with themselves or looking for a connection with God, all, all of life. How, how it, is that accurate? Yes, yes. They feel something missing. They know something is missing and they can't 
get back to that place of connecting with that that missing experience, that missing state of mind, state of being. They know what it is because they've experienced it before, but they lost it due to a stress, due to a divorce, due to world events, due to a loss of a loved one, due to not being misunderstood, going on the spiritual search, whatever it might be. So there's At many some point, people are going, all right, there's more to life than this. Mm-hmm. What is it? What am I missing here? How come I can't heal my stress? How come I can't even be aware that I'm stressing out when I'm stressing out? <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> they okay. run to you like their hair is on fire <laughs> that's right put it out put it out see i've had so many fires now i don't have any hair, so, you know, i'm cool <laughs> i think you're lucky i think i'm going to shave my head too so uh, that way okay that's on the recording i'm going to take you up on that <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> so i had a wave with you I've had a private like session. Like that kind of wave? No, I had, no, you know, the wave <laughs> that you give. I've had a private session with you. I've had, when you were in Sedona, we did a hike and you call them SVA, Sedona Vortex Activations. So would you mind bringing us through a little bit of, well, let's start with the wave because the wave is so yummy. And I do have to say that the last wave I had was in March, so two months ago. And it was stunning. You asked me afterwards, what did I experience? What happened? And all I knew was my body, I was con- constantly aware where my body was, constantly aware that I had a body. But I wasn't seeing, smelling, breathing, hearing, or feeling through that body. It was just a knowing from every one of my senses that I was connected to everything in the universe. And that feeling that, you know, that was, I don't know, was that 20 minutes, 30 minutes? I don't even know, but ah, stunning. So I'm sure everybody wants to know how to get there. Yes. And how to keep it there. Yeah. Oh yeah. The practice. Well, okay. To make another very long story short, um, we offered different perspectives for different people but it all comes from the same place and it all has the same goal which is basically to provide for you the recipient whether it's a session a hike a workshop online event the the safety that the feeling that this energy space is very safe so I can relax, I can open up, and I can really receive, which maybe I don't do as well as I could. I'm just speaking metaphorically of, of uh, clients. So we help them with learning how to receive. Mm. It's very important. Give to yourself, especially moms, especially mothers, basically women in general, because they're taught to be the givers. So we kind of support them to, okay, now it's time to give to yourself. It's really okay to give to yourself. Receive the energies, receive the grace, receive the blessings. So we hold this sacred space and it's a happy space. It's a non, non-judgmental space. And the goal is always the same, no matter what the perspective is. And that is to help provide, not initiate, because it all comes from source, but to provide the experience of connection again, of that feeling of being home. You know that feeling of being home, coming home, that homecoming feeling, that that experience, because once you have that, then you can begin to really navigate your life consciously because you know where to tap into now because the brain has that experience, your body has that experience, and your mind has that experience. So we kind of help support people to um, recreate that experience. So we give them assignments. So maybe your assignment might be, so when you meditate tonight, just go back to this wonderful meditative experience you had in your session or on your hike or in that online event, 
Go back and feel that experience again, deepen it, breathe into it, let go of everything else. And then that's one way to explain the word. Although okay. it's very difficult to explain something that's like really huge. So when you have a wave, you are physically standing, right? You're standing. <laughs> yes, you are standing up. And you are behind. Now, first of all, they would come to your home or they would be in a workshop with you, right? That would be the setting. Yeah. So if they came for a uh, personal session, mm -hmm. we'd go up to the healing room mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, we do a little coaching part and to find out exactly what they want to experience, what they're ready for, where their blocks are, what they're afraid of, you know, it's just honest connection communication, which always happens, by the way. Because I hold the space of non-judgment and like, you can tell me whatever, I'm not going to judge it. And plus, since I don't have a memory, you know that one, right? I forget everything by the next day. You have you a do fabulous that. memory. You even... gotta like, can't not remember. It's like, yeah. You have a fabulous memory even when you forget. <laughs> That's right. I have the perfect memory. There you go. <laughs> so anyway. Um, hmm. So I'm standing behind them and then mm -hmm. I will hold them. I will support their body in some kind of way. And, and the energy just begins to build. Mm -hmm. And I can't say from what direction because it's non-local. It just, it, it happens really quickly. And then all of a sudden you feel like you're falling backwards without doing anything. And you are, you're going to fall backwards. I'm going to catch you. Mm -hmm. I'll lay you on the mat. I cover you up with a nice silk little uh, silk sheet that my friend from Santa Fe gave me, which is uh, kind of a, a green gray and a, and a golden color, mm -hmm. symbolic of course. And uh, so then I put that over the body and then I go into meditation off to the side and, and the person's in a quiet meditative state for maybe 45 minutes, maybe 40 minutes mm -hmm. in silence. Most people tell me that they, they can't move their bodies. They feel paralyzed when they're aware of it. A lot of people just zone out and don't remember anything. Some people have visions. Some people pop in and out of their bodies, like they're here one minute and then the next minute they're gone. Taken away, being trained, being uh, communicated with on the other planes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're aware of it and sometimes you're not. But they will all say that my body was so relaxed, I could not move my body even if I tried. Mm. Now, that's profound because the body, your physical body, <clears throat> generally has not had the conscious experience of being in an um, altered state, fully open and receiving. So the brain's having this experience now of this quantum, which is very different, right? Is, and it's not knowing necessarily how, what to do with that. But it doesn't have to know. It just needs to receive. And people will say, oh, wow, my mind is so clear. I can't think of anything right now, which is very unusual for me. I go, that's your natural state. Mm -hmm. And I go, wow. <laughs> Some people are so altered, they have a hard time talking afterwards. And that's okay. We don't need words afterwards, but everybody will feel altered in a way of like, wow, this is really different. This is really cool. I feel really blissed out. <laughs> so See, and the trick is, is then to carry that into your life, like not to just have it as a session experience. Then you go home and you go back into this other state. We encourage people to carry this state with them now. Literally carry it with you when you go home, when you go to work tomorrow when you go to the movies next weekend, when you go out with friends, keep holding this state, this remembrance of this connection, because that's your natural state. So it's like a 100% clear connection between your soul and your body, and at the same time, between your soul and the universe, God, all that is. Yeah. To the best that they can do it in that moment. And each moment has infinite capacity for expansion and more. Yeah, but in that moment, it's ideally 100%. And it could be twice as much an hour from now. 
if you know what I mean. So each person has a limit in a sense in this now moment, but like five seconds from now, it could be like up here. So our set points always changing, our ability or capacity to embody is always changing unless mentally we keep it on the same level and that's where people get stuck well that was like new information for me anyway we just said <laughs> nice <laughs> i was just thinking that the only person i've ever heard of on the planet that that embodied that I know of is two of them, Jesus and Buddha, who people went to go see and had those kind of experiences. It's that profound. Yeah, there have been others, but the ones that are famous obviously are in our history books. There are many masters that nobody even knows about because they weren't in any history books they weren't in the dead sea scrolls or the nag hammadi texts or whatever mm -hmm. written in pyramids they remain kind of in the background we but, have to get your name on the dead sea scrolls <laughs> uh here's the latest 2020 edition so we have to inscribe it to year 2020. Right? Seriously. No, oh, seriously. Wow. And why they call it Dead Sea Scrolls? It should be the Live Sea Scrolls, man. You know, it's like, let's come up with the present time. Well, thank you anyway for that compliment. But <laughs> you're welcome. You know, they came just to remind us this is what's possible. So Jesus says, here, here's how you do the wave. We zap you on the forehead. You fall over, somebody catches you, you get up and like, whoa, what just hit me kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> See you later, Jesus. Thank you, right? <laughs> you go to Buddha. All right, Buddha. Like, okay, I can't mm, shut off my mind, man. I can't go to sleep at night. It's like, it just is like keeps running. Can you help me? See? And so Buddha said, okay, sit here. And bring all your focus to your breathing. Keep all of your focus to your breathing. Keep breathing in and out. And he would do that for a number of minutes till he psychically knew that the person was gathering their focus and bringing it here into the breathing. And then he might touch them on the forehead or, or he might just whisper something and they would deepen that state. And then he would say, okay, just keep going. Keep going into the oneness. Keep going into follow the light into the body he would do whatever he was guided to do to help that person to stay in that center and go as deep as they could hmm. and so like in the east they call it samadhi when you reach that place of like where you feel like you just have been freed freed up emotionally mentally everything where everything is all of a sudden free now and it's like whoa what the heck just happened <laughs> the eighth limb of yoga <laughs> Samadhi, yeah. yes hey man there you yeah. go yeah mm -hmm. so many ways to do it many avenues i've always asked for the simplest the shortest the most loving and graceful way to my goals mm -hmm. to help other people well let's talk about how you help other people so in the 50 years you've been training for this moment Training for this moment, exactly. You have put together over a hundred activations program, a hundred activation programs, and they're for sale on your website. And each program has multiple activations in it. So you're up to about 250, right? Activations. Yeah, we have probably each individual activation. We probably have maybe 250, maybe even 300. Okay. And we probably have guessing wise at least 100 different events programs packages people can purchase and what's interesting was early on when um i was not trained to do activations i never read about um how to do it i just started doing it one time in 19 oh 
I actually started doing it in 1973, 72, when I was studying to be a psychic, back in the days before they had psychic schools, before anybody even knew the term psychic. Uh, I was studying with this group, and uh, yeah, actually, that's when I began to do that, 19, about 1972. Mm. Did not know that. But anyway, uh, it's evolved over these decades. Mm. So what I realized um, about uh, 12 years ago, I was doing some trainings with the activations, <clears throat> and the knowing came to me that these activations are for the future. Mm. And that these activations are live, so it's not just a one-time thing. So no matter when anybody listens to this recording, it'll be relevant for them, even if it's 50 years from now, or on another planet, Mars or Jupiter, it's still gonna be relevant. And so I went, wow, that's really cool. So they call that evergreen. Evergreen meaning like it's live forever. And some of you may remember when Jesus was here, when he was giving the blessing, he would say to the people, this I give to you, or this that my father through me gives to you lasts for eternity, which means, wow, that's a long time, man. <laughs> so I can come back to this experience at any time, and I'll still be relevant. So then the activation... Cool that is very, very profound. That is yeah, very profound. Yeah, think about it. Everything so the activations, do, <laughs> sorry. Can be evergreen, Kimberly. Everything we all do can be evergreen? Everything that you do and say can be evergreen, can affect people for the rest of their lives when they tune into it. That's pretty cool. So this, these activations are in the form of like a meditation. It's a guided meditation or a guided audio, right? And yes. these would help provide clearing the, clearing the field between you and yourself and you and the quantum. That's the purpose of these activations to help you with whatever the title of that activation is. Yes, and then some. So we address probably every level known to mankind we've addressed it in the activations many times in different ways mm -hmm. but it's basically to help people to have the experience of their spirit in their bodies consciously mm. without falling asleep mm -hmm. ideally that is the intent the intent is for people to have the experience of god the god connection the I am, divine love, whatever you want to call it, bliss, joy, that divine light experience. My assistant who assisted for the first eight years of my uh, traveling and teaching the work, she told me this years later because she thought I knew. This is the funny part. All these people thought I knew, so they never told me anything. <laughs> okay. Kenji you knows, you don't have to tell him. So she told me years later, <clears throat> my first wave experience was at the massage school in Seattle, where we, we taught five people for the weekend how to do some of the techniques. And he says, when you gave me that wave, that demonstration wave in front of the four other people, I had this white light experience. And it knocked me on my ass, literally. It knocked her to the, to the floor, mm -hmm. or to the mat on her back. Mm -hmm. And she was like gone for like an hour. She, her body absolutely did not move one iota, didn't twitch, didn't do nothing. It was like she was dead. That's still. And it's a beautiful experience when you're watching somebody <clears throat> laying on a mat and their body is totally still, their mind is totally turned off. It, it's a very touching experience. I mean, you have to be there to witness it. Uh, words don't do justice. But anyway, she told me that. I went, wow. You had no clue. So she had a white light experience, a very first wave experience. I mean, most meditators spend their whole lives meditating in the cave to have that experience. And she gets it in the first wave. And she goes, 
<laughs> she said to me that day, she goes, <clears throat> I'm tagging along on this trip. You're not getting rid of me. That's kind of what she said. And she became my assistant, my devoted, beloved assistant for eight years. Wow. She wanted every trip with me in every training. And how many more ways did she get? She got a lot. <laughs> She was my catcher, actually, in all those trainings. She caught oh, for me. Interesting. Okay. So she would get the wave experience as well. So she's had many, and mm -hmm. she's a very fine soul. <clears throat> anyway, um, okay, so getting so back. You have your activations. You also offer the same kind of hikes as you did in Sedona, but now they're called Asheville Sacred Hikes. Yes, we want to take people on Vortex Hikes out into the – the woods here, literally, there's woods here everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's a rainforest of trees here, waterfalls, and uh, vortex areas. So I am exploring these areas where to take people, and also I'm um, going to be trained to uh, find out where the mushrooms are, the therapeutic mushrooms that grow here are, so I can take people on mushroom hikes. And then they get to, when they find the mushrooms, they get to take it home, man, and eat it for dinner. Very cool. Sounds good to me. Yeah. And the neat thing that uh, has come since I've moved here is to offer uh, couples R&R &R in the home. Well, they'll spend uh, literally the weekend here. They'll get a wave experience. <clears throat> we'll do some meditations together. We'll <clears throat> go on uh, sacred hikes. We'll have a, a meal, maybe a beer in town, because this place is known as the beer capital of the world, microbreweries. Um, I'll fix some smoothies and an omelet for, for breakfast. So it's basically to um, really care for the couple that comes, to, to really be of service to them and to offer them whatever they're needing to help their marriage, to help their connection, to help their self-esteem, to help each one of them individually, but also as a couple. So, so that's my goal, to help them to understand their conflicts, uh, their gifts together, what they bring for each other, anything and everything that they wish to discuss, we can do that in this uh, couples R&R. &R. That sounds awesome. I'm signing up for that too. <laughs> How about your, um, your local monthly meditation gatherings? Yeah, you know, we were going to have that until the world situation changed. But yes, so at the Peace House, this is what we're calling my uh, rental here, <clears throat> the House of Peace, the Peace House. So I'm gonna it be does feel good. I'm going to be offering locals um, uh, a way to gather, to meet their tribe, to come together and connect and, and to share a story and to meditate together, but what's gonna be different, <clears throat> we're gonna show them how to go into the quantum, step by step. And then we're gonna do some grid work. We're gonna do work for the community, work for the land, healing mm. all of the past karmic heavy stuff that's still in the soil, that's in the grid system here in the South. You can imagine what needs to be cleared in the South. We're not talking about Berkeley, California or Sedona, Arizona. We're talking about the South. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so we'll be doing helping Asheville, helping the surrounding towns, the grid system in general, helping to clear and maintain the vortex areas, all that stuff. The atmosphere, literally the air, the, the atmosphere of this area going up past the Van Allen belt. And we'll probably do some planetary work as well. So. It'll be fun stuff. It'll be totally quantum. You'll be totally connected into the quantum at that point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what about your membership program? Uh, yeah, that, that's really fun. So that includes two free monthly calls, 90 minutes each. First call every month is um, a Q&A session. What you want to share, what you want to talk about what you want in the activation that we always do. Uh, a little uh, phone readings over the phone or uh, through the uh, chat, the chat box or the Q&A page. Uh, not that I'm a reader, but uh, when people ask me stuff, I just tune in and I just start bringing forth whatever comes through without thinking. 
and this is what I like to teach people eventually too, is how to do the work without thinking. You know, just go ahead and do it. Um, they get two free downloads a month of previous uh, products that we've offered or radio shows or interviews that I've been on. So they're basically getting four activations per month. So that's one for each of the two calls, the two free product downloads. They get discounts on products. They get discounts on their sessions and uh, they get free blog article every month and um, free newsletter. And usually they'll, they'll email me and ask a question. I don't charge for that, but I do a very simple short answer. Um, I think it's a lot of fun, but most importantly, it helps people to stay spiritually connected energetically. So they feel part of a group. They feel support somehow with all of the members. They don't feel so alone. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, the reason for my um, creating in the first place was to provide a place where people can come and not feel alone. Because a lot of people out there in our field, they feel alone. They feel like they're alone in the wilderness. So this is a place where they can come and feel family again. And it's so it's one big activational experience, basically. <laughs> <laughs> It's a whole month, a dollar oh, a day, get activated. <laughs> no wonder I can't sleep, Kenji, geez. Okay, we'll just turn, turn down the pillars of light, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, if I, if I could say anything to anyone listening to this conversation, I've spent a lot of time with Kenji. I've spent time in both of his beautiful homes and the love and the support that you've created in, in both spaces, you know, very different climates, very different, you know, ge geographic areas on, on the, um, in the U.S. And as you know, there's a lot of history in the South, not, but I guess you could say there's history in Sedona too with the Native Americans that lived there and got, you know, ousted. Um, yeah. But it's, it's an amazing thing to be in your company and even your phone sessions, you are so present and so clear and so dedicated to your client that there's no loss between the phone and physical contact, though being in your home with you is kind of fun. I'm not gonna lie. So <laughs> I would encourage you get to see in person my insanity. <laughs> <laughs> right up front, live and in person. Exactly. Oh my God. Exactly. Yeah. And get you that way. Road trip. You just magnify it a little bit, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then maybe we'll go to McDonald's early in the morning and give the guy a hundred dollar bill. Yes. We can recreate that experience, Kim. We need to recreate that experience. Yeah. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, it's halfway through the road trip. And well, first of all, when Kenji said he was going to move across the country, and I said, well. How are you going to get your things across the country? And your response was, I'm going to have a mover. And I said, oh, really? How are you going to get your car across the country? And you said, you were going to drive yourself across the country. And of course, I said, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming with you. And what was your response again when I said, oh, I my God. I said, oh, my God, Ed, help. Ed. <laughs> You literally said, I don't think I could take you for five days. <laughs> no. Yeah, I, I said something like that because Kim has a memory. I said something like that. Of course, I'm just joking. But yeah. anyways, go ahead. <laughs> so we did spend seven days together. Uh, and I think it was probably day five. We pulled into a McDonald's and the McDonald's had a kiosk in the middle of the of the room. And we spent five minutes trying to push buttons and you were not satisfied with the options. So we went up to the counter and you asked for a medium black decaf coffee. I don't know why we couldn't find that in the kiosk. And then the guy told you it was like a dollar eighty. And what did you do? Well, I reached into my uh, wallet and so I didn't want to charge it because it was like not even two dollars. So I handed him a hundred dollar bill. A <laughs> hundred dollars. <laughs> and the poor guy looked at that and looked at you and all he said was really 
<laughs> it was a god darnest funny expression on I've seen on anybody's face. It cracked me up. It cracked him up. We were laughing the whole day. Like, really? You're giving me a hundred dollar bills for a cup of coffee? <laughs> oh my god. It was so funny. So we're gonna recreate that when Kim comes to visit in Nashville. Absolutely. We'll Absolutely. go to Starbucks and we'll get a 350 cup of coffee and we'll give them Okay. Bucks. Okay. So what are you gonna do? Give them a two hundred dollar bill? <laughs> Well, thank you, Kenji, so very much You're for welcome. joining us today. I, I truly treasure all of your insights and wisdom and the information that you gave all us today about what the quantum field is and why we want to be there and how it affects our body. It's, I'm sure that uh, it's information that other people will find very enlightening and, and very useful. So thank you, thank you, thank you for, for being here and for being you. Thank you for being my good friend. You are so welcome. I feel very blessed. And to everyone watching, thank you for joining us in this episode of the Happiness Retreat. I hope you have gotten some inspiration, some motivation, some guidance, and some clarity in your connection with your soul and in becoming the master of your own energy. Until next time. <laughs>